What's up, everybody? I'm back. So y'all come on in. Yeah, come on in. What's up, everybody? Y'all come on in. Y'all come on in. We gonna have some fun today. We gonna talk about one of the great legends. Come on in. Yeah, come on in. All right, we done. Yeah, come on in. We'll give him another million y'all and we'll get started. How about that? All right, let's begin, let's begin, let's begin. Today's lecture is called 
Game of Death. And we are going to be stu discussing the secret teachings of Bruce Lee and how it relates to what's going on in our world today. How about that? How about that? So who is Bruce Lee? Bruce Lee is one of the most iconic martial artists to hit the planet. Why is he so iconic? He's iconic because he actually bridged the gap between the East and the West. He was known as the messenger. You see what I'm saying? He is what most martial artists, uh, most of the soul brothers and soul sisters called the messenger. What's up, Sherry? And what we mean by messenger is he brought back or resurrected the martial energy over here. Because up until then, people were practicing martial arts, but it then, but uh, it was more just a form of self-defense. It didn't have no consciousness, no spirit, no soul. You see what I'm saying? It was just, we doing it for self-defensive purposes only for the most part. So, it went until Bruce Lee came over here in the what? 40s, 50s, somewhere up in them. Till the energy began to change. You see what I'm saying? And when he came over here to deliver this new energy, yeah, 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 50, it was the 60s, 50s and 60s, somewhere up in there, I bet. And uh, uh, when he came over here, he, did, he, he set up shop and he started spreading Kung Fu. And he met a lot of resistance, a lot, a lot of resistance. Motherfuckers did not want that energy on this side of the planet. Cause they was having a hard enough time as it was, especially dealing with, especially in the sixties, uh, the the revolts and the revolutions and the the the, the breaking down of the system that happened in the sixties as the freedom fighters began to rise up. So that's what made him a that's what made him an icon. You see what I'm saying? What made him a legend was he he stood on his square to the day he died. You see what I'm saying? He stood on his square to the day he died. And this caused his teachings to reverberate all across the world and, of course, by extension, the timeline. You see what I'm saying? What's up, Rupert? What's up, Lily? So, 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 the timeline. This is what you got going on with Bruce Lee. Now, what was his original martial art? His original martial art he learned was Wing Chun. And his original martial arts teacher was known as Master Ips, or just simply Ip, Ip Man, as we call it most of the time. Now, Master Ip taught him Wing Chun, and then he brought that skill over here because he kept getting in trouble in China. You know, he was actually originally born in San Francisco in 1940. You see what I'm saying? And so, since when he was born in San Francisco, he actually came back to China and grew up. And, and while he was getting in trouble in China, because, you know, she, once he got his Kung Fu, he, he became a monster. See what I'm saying? They said he was whooping ass over there in China. So, so he was getting in so many fights. They had to, they, uh, his father got worried about him and scared for him, so he sent him over here to the West. He journeyed to the West. It's always this journey to the West. See what I'm saying? You got to leave the East. You got to leave your home. Go on this journey of the hero, and this journey always seemed to be to the West, to America. Where he would then set up shop as um, a kung fu teacher, and goddamn motherfuckers lost it when they heard he was teaching everybody. He was teaching everybody, not just um, uh, Chinamen. You see what I'm saying? He was teaching every motherfucking body. And so his first student was a black guy, actually. Uh, I can't think of his name off the top of my head, but yeah. And he was a master at Wing Chun. And after, um, after Bruce Lee left and went back to China, he was the one who continued, uh, he, he was the one who continued the dojo. You see what I'm saying? He continued the dojo. So now, with that being said, why was Bruce Lee so different from everybody else you know he, he was powerful he was unique it's because he broke barriers he broke paradigms not just with his fists but with his philosophies with his teachings you see what i'm saying that that's what made him great you know uh these teachers that he brought to the world have uh you know yet to be touched for real even to this day most people consider bruce lee to be the greatest martial art artists of all time you know the greatest martial artist of all time uh not in the sense that he was a master fighter but because he brought these he brought he, he resurrected the warrior ogun energy and he brought this consciousness this soul back to martial arts that was lacking at the time especially over here in the america you see what i'm saying he brought that back that's why they call him the messenger so now 
Now, let us begin here. Let us begin here. So, what was Bruce Lee's philosophy? His philosophy was what? Be like water. So let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's get into this. Let us hear his great his great philosophy. Be like water. Second here. Get this up and running. Here we go. Here we go.
expression of the human body. I mean, it's everything. I mean, you know, not just the hand. And when you're talking about combat, well, I mean, you know, it is a sport. Now, now you're talking about something else. You have regulations, you have need. But when you're talking about fighting as heroes, with no real fighting, well, then, baby, you better train every part of your body. Knowing it's not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. That's what's there. So there you go. Be like water. Some of his philosophy that he used to change the world. You see what I'm saying? And and we're gonna get to more in just a second. But these these teachings actually were absorbed into many different martial arts. You know, you got a lot of fucking white people and everybody who who hating on them now because, you know, they, they they have an agenda to destroy everything that's not theirs. And, you know, a lot of them, you know, a lot of soulless motherfuckers, they can't comprehend anything higher than the spiritual energy. So, hey, they, half of them can't even comprehend spirit. Hey, most of them can only deal with mind and body. They can't uh, transcend into spirit and soul. You see what I'm saying? A lot of them, you know, a lot of them clones. You know how that is. So, a lot of them go online complaining about, oh, it was just all, he, we didn't see none of his fights. We didn't get to see none of this. We didn't get to see none of that. Although, the man got kicked out of China for a fight. You see what I'm saying? So, so he pretty much, he pretty much left China due to the fact that all he did was fight, you know. So, uh, you know, he didn't, he didn't compete. You don't need to compete. Shit, he was a street fighter. Hey, everybody know that. He was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, everybody, everybody, you know, you know, this MMA world, this new MMA world, and to test your skills, you got to test them in the ring now. You know, you got to be a gladiator. You see, that's all the MMA shit is now, the UFC shit is now. You got to be a gladiator. You know, go in there, break up your body for the next five years, uh, be hurt, be bad and injured, you know, concussions and shit, and, you know, we'll pay you $50,000 a year, $60,000 a year. And possibly we may give you an endorsement, and if you really get popular, we we may even give you a low budget movie. See what I'm saying? That's not a good deal. That's not a good deal. You got motherfuckers, them niggas, that had surgeries out the ass. You see what I'm saying? And don't even give Bruce Lee his props for real that he was, he set the, him and Muhammad Ali set the foundation for mixed martial arts. It was their ideals and everything that sound set the foundation for mixing different martial arts into their skill set. See what I'm saying? It was their open mindedness and they don't even get credit for get credit for. They'll they give Muhammad Ali a little bit more credit for it, but you know, they don't they don't give Bruce Lee his credit. Now, let's see here. Let's see here. More of Bruce Lee's teachers. How about that? More of Bruce Lee's teachers. <laughs> let's continue here. It's Lao's time. Yes, of course. Exhibition? We need 
concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory. Do you understand? Off your opponent, even when you bow. Be on your goddamn bow. <laughs> Let's enter the dragon, by the way. Yeah, I wanna see that. See more of that. So let's see here. So there you go. Just some of his philosophical teachings for y'all. To show y'all how smart he was. We're going to get into his book in a second. And now I want to talk about his, um, his, um, his, his, his personal martial arts style. Also known as Jeet Kune Do. Which is the intercepting fist. That's what it's known in English. The martial art that Bruce Lee created himself. And most people don't even know this. Uh, the reason why his, his his martial art was so good is because he actually talked to Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali taught him some of our secrets, like, you know, do it to music. That's why he was always doing this. He was listening to his own rhythmic beat, right? So, Jeet Kune Do is his own personal cre personally created martial art that he, he, he built up, he built from the ground up. Uh, once he 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 exposed himself to most forms of martial arts, jujitsu, boxing, uh, American boxing. I guess you could say you know they like to they like to differentiate that. Uh, uh, wrestling, and uh, it was one other one. It was one other one. Kickboxing, kickboxing, All right? Kickboxing. No, the kickboxing. So. So um, he 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 was exposed to all this, so he built his own martial art from the ground up. And they still don't want to get him created for Jeet Kune Do. And Jeet Kune Do is practice world motherfucking wide. So even though they, they they can't stand the fact that he even produced this art, right? So let's let's hear what he has to say about his art real quick. Let's continue here. Your open-mindedness is cool, but it doesn't change anything. I don't believe in system, Mr. Longstreet. No, I method. And without system, without method, what's to teach? Yeah, but you had to learn. You weren't born knowing how to take apart three men in a matter of seconds. True. But I found a cause of my ignorance. Well, help me find mine. <laughs> Kick me in the stomach as hard as you can. Well, wait a minute, I don't want to hurt you. I'm holding an airship. Come on, drive right through it, won't I? I'll risk it. <laughs> okay. Come here. Now put your hands in here. Hold it against yourself. Brace yourself. Now, I want you to feel the difference when I put my body behind the kick. When I count to three, exhale strongly. I'll be kicking you. Okay. Can you stand behind me? Who's there? Who is that? It's me, baby. Uh, Just inside to pick up the pieces. <laughs> oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. You ready? You ready. Yeah, 
fantastic. Uh, what is this, uh, what is this thing you do? In Cantonese, Ji Kun Dong, the way of the intercepting fist. Intercepting fist, huh? Or foot. Come on, touch me. Any way you can. You see? To reach me, you must move to me. Your attack offers me an opportunity to intercept you. In this case, I'm using my longest weapon, my sidekick, against the nearest target, your kneecap. This can be compared to your left jab in boxing, except it's much more damaging. I see. Well, speaking of a left jab... Oh, this time I intercept your emotional tenses. You see, from your thought to your fist, how much time was lost. Not much. Now Lee's going to teach me all this. I cannot teach you. Only help you to explore yourself. Nothing more. All right, all right. Come on, let's, uh, let's explore some more of those kicks, huh? Nonsense. Oh, Richard. Now listen to the beat. And listen to my movie, okay? Try to remember, you will lose. Empty 
into your mind. Be formless, shameless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. Put it into a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or creep or drip or crash. Be water, my friend. Why don't I just stand in front of Bull and recite that to him? Maybe he'll faint or drown. When is it? So he said a lot of things there. Empty your mind. What does he mean by that? It means make your mind neutral. Not negative or positive. Most people say you got to be positive. No, you're supposed to be neutral. Positive is still an extremity. You see what I'm saying? Just like negative is an extremity. Of course, positive, and when you, when you depending on what you're doing, it's, it's a slightly higher vibration than negative. It's still an extremity. So since it's an extremity... You're not actually manifesting your full consciousness because you're not neutral. See, the way of neutrality, the way of no mind, the way of emptying the mind is all about thinking as if you were a neutron, right? No charge. You know, neutrons have no charge. So so if you have no charge and this this and you breathing and this force this universal living field around us this life energy has no charge then you become one with it that's why at first he could hear the birds because he was tapping into the force but when he started thinking when he started using his conscious mind his monkey mind his animal mind again then he started to lose that connection he started to close his mind to the force and goddamn, it, it, it cut, he cut back on his ego. You see what I'm saying? But when he was, he was in tune, when he was one with himself and nature for that, for that brief moment, he could hear the birds. And he could move like Bruce Lee. It was just that one moment. And you know Bruce Lee called hell trying to teach that nigga that shit, man. I, I was like, damn, Bruce Lee. He, he, he rough. He, he, he ain't getting it. And then he only had a time limit to get it to. That's not something you can do in five days you see what i'm saying six days that's something that's gonna take a while to make six three months six months a year some thai cheese some chi gone you see what i'm saying you need time to deprogram all the bullshit that you have been taught your whole life and emptying not only your mind but your whole being because in order to channel the force completely not just into your mind you have to learn to be neutral as a holistic being, you see, what I'm saying when you neutral, then the for you attract the force because the force is neutral. You know, light attracts light, right? That's that's a, that's a universal principle. Like attract light, which is actually the law of magnetism or the law of attraction, as I also call it. You see, what I'm saying so. Light frequency attracts light frequency. You see, what I'm saying so. So so this is what you got going on here. This is what you got going on here. So he, he taught him a lot of things. He, he was like. You got you 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 too you too rigid. You notice he said you was too rigid. You too you too stiff. You know you robotic. You see what I'm saying? No, loosen up. You know let let it flow. See what I'm saying? What 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 what's hard? This you see that this there? You know or see what I'm saying? It's more it's more power in there because you flew it now. So that's what was going on here. He 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 was he was he was like. Nah, you gotta loosen up, cause you too rigid, you too, you too, you too hard. You know, you got, you got just let it all go. Let your body relax. Let your, let your body just feel. You know, he, he told the kid, don't think. You know, it was this thing where these motherfuckers was trying to think or process it, and he was like, you don't, you don't, you don't process it up here. You process it here. You see what I'm saying? You feel it. Feeling is heart. Feeling is heart intelligence. 
thinking is this, this brain up here's intelligence, and we all know this brain can get you fucked up when you when you try to think of shit when you don't need to be thinking. It can, it can burn your mind out and everything, right? So so so, but when you when you when you guide by your hearts and its desires and its feelings and its intelligence, you usually end up at the end of the day in the right place at the right moment at the right time. You see what I'm saying? So this is what you got going on here. This is what he was trying to teach him. And so, and so, um, and, you know, it, it was rough, real, real, you know, it was sad that we had to waste, we had to waste time watching him teach a, a, such a, such an unworthy student in my eyes, like, cause he, 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 he was, he, he was not worthy to learn that. Cause, uh, you know, he told the kid earlier in, into the drag, he was like, don't hit with anger, hit with emotional content, hit with the feeling of kicking. You see what I'm saying? And of course, bring your whole body. You see what I'm saying? As you bring your whole body with it. What, what does he mean by that? Don't just punch like that. Punch. You see what I'm saying? Punch. You know, bring the energy of your being behind it, the force behind it. You see what I'm saying? And you can knock a motherfucker out. That's what he's saying. So he was like, I need you to feel this punch. Leaving from here up into here. You see what I'm saying? So that's what, he, that's what he got going on here. He was trying to think about it. You know, he was trying to process it. You know, that's a big problem in America. You know, they make you intellects. You know, they got this bad habit of making you intellect. Instead of just, no, uh, there's a big difference between being intellectual and intuitive. See so you know what I'm saying? Intellects figure things out. Intuit, into, uh, um, with people who intuit or int uh, use their intuitions, they feel and know. See, that's a big difference. Knowing. Knowing is your ability to accept what the what is and what's going to be. You see what I'm saying? No matter what, figuring it out is processing. You know, like a like a computer. One plus one equals two. Four plus four equals eight. Twelve plus twelve equals twenty four. You see what I'm saying? That's figuring something out. Knowing something is just accepting it the way it is and how it's gonna be for you. You know, and you and once you get to that situation, after you accept the situation and uh, for what it is and accept it for what it's going to be, then you can adapt accordingly to the events of that situation to the best of your abilities. So that's the difference between intuition and processing. You see what I'm saying? Processing. So now let's continue here into his book. Let's continue here into his book. Let's see here. Page three. Oh, yeah, this is the tile of Jeet Kune Do, by the way. By, of course. His wife worried why he, he, he was healing in the hospital. You know. We're we going to go in here. We're going to go in here. Let's see here. Page three. This book is dedicated to the free, creative martial arts. Research your own experience, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, and add what is essentially your own. So there you go. Page seven. Check out. Check out this. The martial arts are based upon understanding, hard work, and a total comprehension of skills. Power training and the use of force are easy, but total comprehension of all the skills of the martial arts is very difficult to achieve. To understand, you must study all of natural movement in all living things. Naturally, you can understand the martial arts of others. You can study the timing and the weaknesses. Just knowing these two elements will give you the capacity to knock him down rather easily. So what is he saying here? He's saying that if you study all things in a holistic manner, then you can see the holes. You begin to, you begin to have this... This sight, this foresight, as they call it, and you begin to see the holes, or you see the attack before they do the attack, and you are able to counter it. But you can also see the the flaws in their techniques and capitalize on it. You see what I'm saying? And that's now the heart of the martial arts is in understanding techniques. To understand techniques, you must learn that they contain a lot of condensed movement. That is because the good techniques includes. Quick changes, great variety, and speed. To put to put the heart of the martial arts in your own heart and have it be a part of you 
means total comprehension and the use of a freestyle. They go that word again. Keep game. The the, the the freestyle is the soul style. When you have that, you will know that there are no limits because that now you, the freestyle is the soul energy. You see what I'm saying? Starting to tap, tap into that soul energy, that fire, that soul fire. So next, acquired talent, and, acquired talent and natural talent. Some people are born with good physiques, a sense of speed, and a lot of stamina. Stamina, that's fine. But in the martial arts, everything you learn is an acquired skill. Absorbing the martial arts is like the experience of Buddhism. The feeling for it comes from the heart. You have the dedication to get what you what you know you need. When it becomes part of you, you know you have it. You succeed at it. You may never fully understand all of it, but you keep at it. And as you progress, you know the truth. You know the true nature of the simple way. You may join a temple or a kum. You observe nature. You observe nature's simple way. You experience a life you never had before. So there you go. There you go. Let's continue. Here's a lot of soul teachings here. You know, he had the man had had some soul about him. You see what I'm saying? This is this is this is a um, this is a set of teachings from a Taoist priest. And to a soul absolutely free from thoughts and emotion, even a tiger finds no room to insert its claws because there's nothing there to insert. You know, one of one and the, because they neutral. Peep game. One that so 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 basically what he's saying that 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 paragraph is deep in and of itself. And to a soul absolutely free from thoughts and emotions, meaning you, your your soul is hollowed out, it's empty, it's it's free. You see what I'm saying? Of thoughts, emotions, and desires and passions. Even though you don't mean you don't have them, but you not you don't succumb to them either. You can manipulate them at will. You see what I'm saying? You can manipulate your passions, your emotions, and your thoughts at your own free will. So now, even a tiger finds no room to insert its fierce claws because how how you gonna how you gonna attack something that's neutral? You know how you gonna attack something that's neutral? Protons have a positive charge, electrons have a negative charge, but the neutron don't have no charge. So how you gonna attack something that's not kicking out no that's not kicking out any energy? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? The energy is no, the, the energy is neutral. The, the energy can pass right by you and you wouldn't even know it. That's the secret to the force. You see what I'm saying? The energy can pass right by you and you wouldn't even know it because it's neutral. You see what I'm saying? It has no charge. So you can absorb... It, it, that's why you have to be trained to feel and see the force. Yes, you can see the force unlike popular belief teaches you. That's why you have to be trained to feel and see the force because it's neutral. And your life is not the way the way society is set up. It's, it's set up in a series of positives. And negatives, you see what I'm saying? Pain and pleasure, you know, you know, uh, you know, uh, love and hate. Uh, let's see here, rage and serenity. You see what I'm saying? Consciousness and dreaming. There's always these polarities here, yin and yang, dark and light. You know, but 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 where, where's the middle ground? You see what I'm saying? Where's the middle ground between the two? You see what I'm saying? Where's that middle ground at? And that's that's where you find true, true happiness, true enlightenment, true enlightenment. You see what I'm saying? Well, or you know, when everything is um, stable. And in fact, they said they said the, the 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 definition of balance is things a uh, thing with an equal distribution. See what I'm saying? Things with an equal distribution of energy that allows you to stand upright and steady or stable. So when you have an equal distribution of energy flowing inside of you, you are literally stable and steady, and you walk upright. You ever tripped over your own foot and lost your balance? Yes, you. If you didn't catch yourself, you hit the goddamn ground, right? <laughs> that's a that's a primary principle of balance. See what I'm saying? If you ain't catch yourself from falling, your ass hit the ground. So 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 that's what balance really is. It's becoming upright, steady, and stable. So yeah, by 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 equally distributing that energy all across or all throughout your being. You see what I'm saying? So now, let us continue here. One in the same breeze is one in the same breeze passes over the pines on the mountain and the oak trees in the valley. And why do they give different notes? No thinking, no reflecting, perfect emptiness, 
Yet therein, something moves, following his own course. He's talking about the force now. The eye sees it, but no hands can take hold of it. The moon in the stream. Clouds and mist. They are mid-air transformations. Above them, eternally shine the sun and the moon. Victory is for the one, even before the combat, who has no thought of himself, abiding in the no-mindedness of great origin. See what I'm saying? Of the source. See what I'm saying? So, 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 moving, be like water, still, be like a mirror, uh, uh, respond like an echo. Let me read that again. Moving, be like water, still, be like a mirror, but respond like an echo. So, yeah, so, 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 now, teachings on emptying your mind. Let's see here, page 12. Check this out. The way to transcend karma. Oh, so karma can be transcended. Lies in the proper use of the mind and the will. The oneness of all life is a truth that can be fully realized only when false notion, notions of a separate self whose destiny can be considered apart from the whole are forever annihilated. Let me read that one more time because you know a lot of people say you you subject to the law of karma. You know, the way to transcend karma lies in the proper use of the mind and the will. So he told you right there how to transcend karma by properly using your mind and will, uh, and, and, uh, properly using your mind and will to do what you need to do in life, to get to where you need to be. The oneness of all is a truth that can be fully realized only when false notions of a separate self whose destiny can be considered apart from the whole are forever annihilated. Once you realize that nothing is separate, all is one. Then you have achieved the way of Zen, the way of the way of the way of wholeness and oneness. You see what I'm saying? Now, let's continue. Voidness is that which stands right in the middle between this and that. Like I just said, there's neutrality. The void is all inclusive, having no opposite. There is nothing which it excludes or opposes. It is living. It is living void because all forms come out of it, and whoever realizes the void is filled with life and power. And the love of all beings. So, 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 so. So this is what you got going on here. It is living void because all forms come out of it. And whoever realizes this void is filled with life and power and the love of all beings. What is he saying here? He's saying the void is the realm of infinite potential. And through uh, the realm of infinite potential, all things can be birthed. You see what I'm saying? That's basically what he's saying here. Let's see. Turn a doll, turn into a doll made of wood. It has no ego. It thinks nothing. It is not grasping or sticky. Let the body and limbs work themselves out in accordance with the discipline they have undergone. Now, if nothing within you stays rigid, our things will disclose themselves. Meaning you got you gotta be loose. You gotta be you gotta be loose. You see what I'm saying? Moving, be like a mirror, still, be like a mirror, respond like an echo, like I just said earlier. Nothing this can be defined, and the softest thing cannot be snapped. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. The localization of the mind means it's freezing. When it ceases to flow freely as it is needed, it is no more the mind in its suchness. And this last one on this page. The immovable is the concentration of energy at a given focus, as at the actions of a will instead of dispersal and scattered activities. So, 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 so these, this is deep. See what I'm saying? This is deep. Now, let's see here. What's the next page? Page 13, okay. Art reaches its great peak when the void of self-consciousness. Freedom discovers man. The move, uh, Freedom discovers man the moment he loses concern over what impression he is making or about to make to other people. So yeah, yeah, this 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 this, this is something serious. The perfect way is only difficult for those who pick and choose. Do not like, do not dislike. All will then be clear. Make a hair breath difference, and heaven and earth are set apart. If you want the truth to stand clear before you, never be for or against. The struggle the struggle between for and against is the mind's worst disease. That's true. When you try to be con or pro and all other shit, then you create an internal struggle and strife in yourself. And then you got to sort that shit out. And that could take 
That could take a minute. That could take an hour. That could take a day. Could take a week. Could take a month. Okay, it could take up years just to resolve that particular issue. This is what they talking about here. Let yourself go with the disease. Be with it. Keep company with it. This is the way to be rid of it. In Buddhism, there is no place for using effort. Just be ordinary. Just be ordinary and nothing special. Eat your food, move your bowels, pass water, and when you're tired, go and lie down. The ignorant will laugh at me, but the wise will understand. In other words, be yourself. Do the things you need to do on a regular basis, you know, and live your life to its highest height, basically. Let's see. Give up thinking as though as though not giving it up. Observe techniques as though not observing. Give up thinking as though not giving it up. What does he mean by that? Like I said earlier, thinking, if you thinking, then you're giving energy to the thought. But if you ain't thinking, then you're giving energy to yourself. In other words, thinking requires you to use a certain level of energy to, to, to process that thought, right? But when you, when you eliminate the thought, then you can focus solely, focus solely on the moment at hand. And you can focus solely on yourself because you are not interrupted by the program known as thought. You see what I'm saying? So some observe techniques as though not observing. Observe techniques. Uh, uh, let the techniques reveal themselves to you. You see what I'm saying? Don't rush. Don't 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 rush to figure out a technique. Let the technique reveal itself to you. Let the science reveal itself to you. you see what I'm saying? It will come in due time. That's basically what he's saying. Let's see, I got two more pages here. Now, here's one I really wanted to get to. The art of soul. Let's see here. The aim of art is projecting inner vision into the world. To state in aesthetic creation the deepest psychic and personal experiences of a human being. It is to enable those experiences to be intelligible and generally recognize the total framework of an, of an ideal world. You see what I'm saying? Art reveals itself in psychic understanding of the inner essence of things and gives form to the relations of man with nothing, with the nature of the absolute. So there you go. I like that. Art reveals itself in psychic understanding of the inner essence, your soul, see what I'm your immortal consciousness of things and gives form to the relation of man with nothing. What is nothing? Nothing, or what they call nothing, is actually your relationship with the primordial realm of all. So, so if you if you got a relationship with the primordial, and the primordial is the origin uh, the origin of all things, you automatically got a relationship with all things because you've went back to the original program or archetypal energies of forces that pre that spun all of the cre creation all of creation's blueprints. You see what I'm saying? That's what he means by it. Let's see here. Let's see here. And then with the nature of the absolute, which pretty much is the same thing. The absolute we already know is is is, is poor man's rest to pre-existing one. The supreme, unmanifested uh, consciousness and self-being. Let's see here. Let's see. An artist's expression is his soul made apparent. His schooling, as well as his cool being exhibited. Behind every motion, the music of his soul is made visible. Otherwise, his motion is empty. An empty motion is like an empty word. No meaning. <laughs> read that. Let's read down again. An artist's expression is his soul made apparent, made manifest. His schooling, as well as his cool being exhibited, personified. Behind every motion, the music of his soul is made visible. They go their soul wavelength that I'll be telling y'all about, but you begin to express it on the physical plane. That, that, that your inner music, your inner energy begins to manifest on the plane, on, 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 this, on, this, on this realm. Otherwise, his motion is empty, and empty motion is like an empty word. It has no meaning. It's sweet nothings. That's what you call those. Sweet nothings. Whether it's empty motion, empty words, empty techniques, you know, empty lifestyle, empty, uh, hating your job, if it's empty to you, then it's sweet nothings. You see, that's what you call those sweet nothings. Whispers that has no meaning, purpose, or substance. So now, let's see. Art calls for a complete mastery of techniques developed by reflection within the soul. So, like I said, 
When the soul awakens, everything gets information. So when you consult with your soul first about a thing, then when your soul gives you the answer, it's be in your best interest to carry it out. So, 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 a complete master of your techniques developed by a reflection of your soul. When you go off your soul tuition, which is the inner intuition that's uh, generated from within you, and you learn to kick properly or elbow properly, and you start listening to your soul on how it's done, then your soul corrects that, that uh, auto corrects those mistakes for you. Like, ah, like, ah, I elbow wrong. Okay, let me fix that. Or, 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 or I, I kick wrong. Or let me fix that. You see what I'm saying? You, you, your, your soul begins to auto correct itself. And, and, and it auto, uh, it auto, the soul auto corrects the spirit, the spirit auto corrects the body and the mind. You see what I'm saying? So there you go. There you go. Artless art is the artistic process within the artist. Its meaning is the art is art of the soul. Let me read that again. Artless art is the artistic process within the artist. Its meaning is art of the soul. All the various moves of all the tools means a step on the way to the absolute aesthetic world of the soul. See, man understood soul better than most people thought he did. You see what I'm saying? He understood that immortal consciousness, that all things started there. So, 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 yeah. Now. Creation in art is the psychic unfolding of the personality, which is rooted in the nothing. Its effects is a deepening of the personal dimension of the soul. So you neutral, your soul can work through you. See what I'm saying? Your soul, see, 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 when you get back to your soul, your soul operates you. See what I'm saying? Not the body, not the mind, not the spirit. The soul operates your whole being. See what I'm saying? You work from soul hourly. See what I'm saying? So so the the will, the soul's will, is passions, is emotions, and is its wisdom operates through you when you get back to the soul. You see what I'm saying? So there you go. Now, the art is art is the art of the soul at peace. Like moonlight mirror in a deep lake. The ultimate aim of the artist is to use his daily activity to become a past master of life. Peak gang, what he said there. The art is art. It's the art of the soul at peace. Like moonlight mirror in a deep lake. Oh, yeah, that's deep. You know, the, like moonlight mirror in a deep lake. Consciousness spawning out of your subconscious. The ultimate aim of the artist is to use his daily activity to become a past master of life. And so lay hold of the art of living. He said a past master of life. You see what I'm saying? He ain't said a current master of life. He said a past master of life. What did he mean? What does he mean by that? In time, you just was like this little speck on, on in, in the grains of time, right? So when you master yourself, you become you become you become the past, the present, and the future. It all becomes one. So when you when, when when all those things become one because this uh, past present and future is one in the force and since how you are a reflection of the force being that because you are in tune fully in tune with your soul and so you lay hold of the art of living you understand the art of living because you understand that you are nothing but this divine spark inside of you and that everything else is bonus cunty that's basically what they're saying here master Masters in all branches of art must first be masters of living, for the soul creates everything. There you go. All vague notions must fall before a pupil can call himself a master. So all the bullshit got to be done away with, <laughs> basically what they're saying, before you can call yourself a master at anything. So all the doubt, all the mistakes, all the, all the mishaps, all the, all the, all the uh, misdirections and incorrections have to all be Resolved before you can call yourself a master. Now, art is the way to the absolute and to the essence of human life. The aim of art is not the one-sided promotion of spirit, soul, and senses, but the opening, of, but the opening of all human capacity, but the opening of my bad job, but the opening of all human capacities, thought, feeling, will, to the life rhythm of the world of nature. So will the voiceless voice be heard and the self be brought into harmony with it? Oh yeah, let's break that one down. Art is the way to the absolute, the primordial. 
to the essence and to the essence of human life, the soul. The aim of the art is not the one-sided promotion of just spirit, soul, and senses, but the opening of all human capacities, which is thought, feel, and will to the life rhythm of the world of nature. So when you open yourself up to the rhythm of the universe, the world, and even yourself, then you become you, you start to become the holistic being, the holistic Jedi. So will the voice's voice be heard? The voice's voice is your inner voice. And the self be brought into harmony with it. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yeah. He 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 go in here. He go in here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Alright, the path to truth. Not to be fragmented, but to see the totality. Uh, my bad. The path to truth, not to be fragmented, but to see the totality. Krishna Murti. The, the, the ten steps to the path to truth. Seeking after truth, awareness of truth, and its existence. Perception of truth, its substance and direction, like the perception of movement. Understanding of truth. Experiencing of truth. Mastering of truth. Forgetting truth. Forgetting the carrier of truth. Return to the primal source where truth has its roots, origins. Repost is n repost in the nothingness. You see what I'm saying? Or, or revel. Or enjoy the nothingness. You see what I'm saying? And then let's see here. Let's see here. The Jeet Kune Do. For security, the unlimited living is turned into something dead. A chosen pattern that limits. To understand Jeet Kune, Jeet Kune Do, one ought to throw all, away all ideas patterns, styles. In fact, he should throw away even the concepts of what is or isn't ideal in Jeet Kune Do. Can you look at a situation without naming it? Naming it? Naming it, making a, it a word causes fear. <laughs> what is it, L. Judge? You need the book? It's, it, it's a tile or the way of Jeet Kune Do by Bruce Lee. It's his book. Y'all want to get it? No, you get it off Amazon if you if you, if you need it, yeah, the, the philosophical teachings in here is deep. See what I'm saying? The G Kune Do favors formlessness so that it can assume all forms. And since G Kune Do has no style, it can fit in with all styles. As a result, G Kune Do utilizes all ways and is bound by none and likewise uses any technique or means which serve its end. I tell y'all one thing, I was reading this shit when I was studying Tai Chi back in the day. It accelerated my consciousness to so, such a point where I actually experienced the things that he's teaching in his books. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, so he, so he's not he's not fucking around here. Approach Jeet Kune Do with the idea of mastering the will. Forget about winning and losing. Forget about pride and pain. Let your opponent graze your skin, and you smash into his flesh. Let him smash into your flesh, and you fracture his bones. Let him fracture your bones, and you take his life. Do not be concerned with your escaping safely. Lay your life before him. God damn. The great mistake is to anticipate the outcome of the engagement. You are not to be thinking of whether it ends in victory or in defeat. Let nature take its course, and your roots will strike at the right moment. God damn. God damn, let's see here. Let's see. Simplicity is the shortest distance between two points. I always like that. <laughs> yeah, Jeet Kune Do does not beat around the bush. It does not take winding detours. It follows a straight line to the objective. Like he said, simplicity is the shortest distance between two points. That's the whole quote. The art of Jeet Kune Do is simply to simplify. It is being oneself. It is reality and its isness. Thus, isness is, is the meaning. Having freedom in its primary sense, not limited by attachments, confinements, partializations, complex and complexities. Jeet Kune Do is the enlightenment. It is a way of life, a movement towards willpower and control, though it ought to be enlightened by intuition. Damn. Damn. I got one more here for y'all. Then y'all go get the book for yourself, you know, after this one. While being trained, the student is to be active and dynamic in every way. But in actual combat, his mind must be calm and not at all disturbed. Key game, the, the duality here. While being trained, the student is to be active and dynamic in every way. So you're supposed to be getting it when you're in your training. You're supposed to be fucking wilding the fuck out in your training. 
But in actual combat, his mind must be calm and not at all disturbed. You see, do add to them because when when it's, it's balance. When you training, there is no out of chaos, so you gotta create chaos. But when you in actual combat, the chaos is created for you, so you gotta create inner harmony. You see what I'm saying? So that's 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 the secret to what he's saying there. He must feel as if nothing critical is happening. Like I just said. When he advances, his steps should be light and secure. His eyes not fixed and glaring and same at the end. His behavior should not be in any way different from his everyday behavior. No change taking place in his expression. Nothing but the fact that he's engaged in mortal combat. So there y'all go. There y'all go. Just a little something, something, just a few snippets from his book, Tao of the Jeet Kune Do. Y'all can go get it if you want. Check it out. You know, it's up to you. I leave that to you. But yeah, his philosophy is just the truth. Truth. You see what I'm saying? The truth. Truth. Now, let us get to the infamous one inch punch. How about that? He beating the shit out of that board. Hold on here. Let's hopefully I can make that a little dark for y'all. Let's go back a little bit. Welcome to Bruce Lee Real Fight Channel. Today we are going to talk about Bruce Lee's one inch punch. The one inch punch is a punching technique performed at a range of zero to one inch. It is originally a punching exercise from Wing Chun, which is known as explosive force moment. Bruce Lee learned this technique from his Wing Chun training in Hong Kong and later on he redesigned it. He improved the technique to increase the punching power and make it more effective. In 1967 Long Beach International Karate Championships, Bruce Lee showed the one-inch punch to the world in front of television for the first time. He explains the one-inch punch is quantitatively using a force gauge. As you can see from the footage here, Bruce Lee invited Joe Lewis on stage to punch on the guy on the left. The guy is about six foot tall and he just slightly go backward. Then Bruce Lee demonstrates the six inch punch on the same guy. Look at the footage here. Still need more words? Yeah, subscribe. 
subscribe and ring the notification bell. Thank you for watching. Explosive force movement. Damn. You no. Know, he he could channel his energy so well through his body that he can exert it in this one point and shoot it out his finger and project it out his fist and knock the motherfucker backwards. Excuse me, y'all. So this is what you got going on here. These monsters. These was monsters walking the earth. And guess what? That was real life. You know, he ain't just doing it in movies. He do it in real life first, then go do it in movies. How many people you, can you say do that? See what I'm saying? So now, of course, let's get to the beat of this conversation. Get the game of death. The game of motherfucking death. This is his fight um, between Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Notice he wearing yellow, which deals with the solar plexus. And we're going to go over that. We're going to analyze that. Hold on there. Let me, let me turn that brightness down. The brightness, for, for these to be old movies, the brightness was actually done well. You know, so I don't even think I need brightness. Nope. Don't. That motherfucker tall as hell. Well, cool. That boy Ring got skills. But he's actually a country master in real life. Off his shoes,
it's on the other side. Pretty much another fight. Yeah, him his fight with Kareem Abdul Jabbar, probably one of the most legendary fights in fighting cinema. You see what I'm saying? Martial cinema around here. So yeah. So yeah. So now, you notice he was wearing yellow, which was sold. The soul of Plexus wheel. Now what is the game of death? Let's get to the bulk of this lecture. The game of death is actually the game of life. You know, we just came off our Necronomicon lecture, and well, it's Necronomicon, the Book of the Dead. Well, if there's a Book of the Dead, there's a Book of Life. So, what is the Book of the Dead? The Book of the Dead is the Book of Souls. Well, the Book of Life is you. You, the Book of Life. You see what I'm saying? Your experiences, your, your, your wisdom that you gain. In this experience throughout the, your throughout your journey of the heroes, you see what I'm saying? Yo, 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 um, 
the the people that you touch and inspire, you know, and so on and so forth. That is what makes up the book of life. They said what? Uh, the angels in heaven then signed my name into the book of life. What does that mean? That means you did your you did your internal work and you rose you rose up to the crown. So now the angels in your heaven has signed your name in your book of life because you have made it back to the living consciousness of your crown of your own personal heavenly realm. So there you go. What's up, my tool? What's up, Sheezer? So there's what you got going on here. This you got going on here with this with these advanced uh, teachings here. This, uh, he he was he was the truth. So we dealing with the game of life right now as we collect uh, as much wisdom, experience, um, bun and buns as possible. You see what I'm saying? That's that's the name of the game. You know, shoot, and you know you, you live. You know you take care of your survival needs, whatever. But that's not life. That's survival. You see what I'm saying? Life is experiencing this realm to its fullest capacity with uh, that to the best of your abilities. That's what life is. Where the game of death is when you learn to master the powers of your soul. Necromancy. Magic. Dream psychomancy. You see what I'm saying? Learn to harness those internal forces inside of you. The force. Your melanin. You see what I'm saying? The chaos energy inside of you. And all other and all other aspects that live within your universal realms. That's what the game of death really is. That's why everything that Bruce Lee mentioned was about you being inside yourself. You you turning your focus inwardly onto yourself. That's the true game of death. The game of your soul or the game to get back to your soul so that you can learn from your soul so your soul can project itself through you and experience life as a living, breathing celestial entity, entity through this fucking physical corpse that's destined for death. You see what I'm saying? So it's an interplay between life and death. See what I'm saying? The Japanese used to say, one who knows how... The one who knows how to master death is one who faces his death every day. You see what I'm saying? One who faces his death, meditate on his death every day. You should wake up and meditate on dying every day. Once you once you die once a day, you realize that you are a free and sovereign being that is eternal from this realm to the next, back to the source, through the force, and on and on and on. For eternity. You see what I'm saying? For eternity. So there y'all go. There y'all go. So now I'm gonna wrap it up with a Bruce Lee tribute. Yep, wrap this up with a Bruce Lee tribute. How about how about that? Uh we're gonna use the last dragon. You know, from the from into the dragon or the first dragon, Bruce Lee, to the last dragon, Bruce Lee Roy. From 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 the Chi to the Glow. P gang here. Peep gang here. So let's, let's listen here. Uh, let's see here. Okay, now his, his a lot darker. <laughs> let's see here, can we, let's see what we can do about that. Let's try it again.
And there y'all go. That pretty much wraps up this Bruce Lee tribute slash teachings on the game of death and the game of life. So with that being said, I'm Marvin Jones. Y'all put the word out. Share this with your friends. Let them know what it is. You want to check out my other cold lectures, you can, you can hit me up at uh, the Middle Night Order on YouTube. If you want to donate, you can cash out me at MCJ Network, and I'm out. Peace.